Final Fantasy V was another ambitious take on the signature job system of the series. We're gonna see the jobs be the core theme of gameplay changes between versions. The other significant key point will be bugs and oddities. Most bugs in Final Fantasy V are harmless, inoffensive oversights, and we'll simply list them off, though some you'll want to be wary of that might inhibit or benefit your playthrough. We'll notice as the ports go on, though, that the line between bugs, oversights, and quality of life changes begin to blur. While we're talking about the original game, some of the noteworthy ones to mention right away are bugs like item duping, item transforming, encounter rate manipulation, several inaccurate or simply missing necessary item descriptions, losing your vehicle if you place it in a bad spot like some entrances, and some abilities or weapons not functioning properly like Observe, Power Drink, Minuchi, and Mute. We'll get into more details about these bugs and oversights though as we continue to see them fixed. While Final Fantasy V released on its own in Japan, here in the West we got the Final Fantasy Anthology. The North American Final Fantasy Anthology includes Final Fantasy V and VI, while the European Anthology includes IV and V. And just like every Final Fantasy port on PlayStation and on GBA, Tosei had a hand in its development. No real new content in this version outside of the new CG opening. This is the first official English translation. Ferris was given a heavy pirate accent in this translation, which isn't seen in any other English version after this one. A default sprint was added, and it stacks with the Thief's dash ability. This version has notable load times, specifically whenever you enter or leave battles, and when pulling up menus. The Super Famicom version's bugs and quirks remain intact, so if you were to opt for the PlayStation version, you aren't bypassing any of the original version's bugs. Visuals are largely identical too, though there's some UI differences and accommodation for other characters than Japanese, as well as the ability to cycle party menus with L and R. Notably, the largest visual difference is the battle transition. Now as far as the music goes, it does have a bit of a different sound to it. And sound effects in this version are also oddly lower quality than the original. <laughs> Lastly, a heads up for anyone with a black label copy of Anthology concerning backwards compatibility. On PS2, the game has graphical glitches in the save menu, and on PS3, the game crashes when you go to save. The PAL version and Greatest Hits Green Label do not have these issues. And the next release is Final Fantasy V Advance on the Game Boy Advance. While there's no 3D cinematics, there is a bestiary and unlockable music player and quick saves. There are also four new jobs including Necromancer, Cannoneer, Gladiator, and Oracle. Additionally, there's a new bonus dungeon and an optional boss. A new translation is used, which serves as the base translation used in the other versions going forward. A mono artwork portraits also now accompany dialogue. Getting into the gameplay changes, the multiplayer options were removed from the config settings. Also, some missable encounters were made non-missable, though not all of them, so be wary of that. Many of the original version's bugs and oversights were fixed in this version, including item transforming, casting single target spells on multiple targets, the observability not showing weaknesses, situations where you lose your ride permanently if you place it on a bad tile like certain cave entrances, hiding party members being inflicted with zombie and therefore stuck hiding forever, being able to access locations during the third act you aren't supposed to be able to access yet, caught moss fungus and gel enemies not doing anything when released in battle, inaccurate and even some missing weapon descriptions, and even bypassing the final boss's final phase by inflicting them with berserk through mix. 
All of those have been fixed. That being said, while most bugs and oversights were fixed, not all of them were, such as Chemist Power Drink still not boosting attack outside of Goblin Punch, the Time Spell Mute still doesn't work on enemies as intended, and Samurai's Minuchi not inflicting paralysis. Some new bugs appear in this version as well. Blue Mage's Vampire Spell is bugged. The spell is supposed to damage enemies or heal party members equal to 50% of their missing HP. Instead, here it will damage enemies or heal you or your allies 100% of their missing HP. Beastmaster's Calm ability is intended to inflict stop on magic creatures, but instead works on literally anything that isn't a magic creature, including humans and robots. More bugs include Mimes Expend MP to cast Meteor even if they can't actually cast it, the Return spell which is intended to reset a battle, doesn't reset timers with them if there is one, and item duping was still possible, but these three issues in particular were fixed in the PAL version of Final Fantasy V. Advance. Visuals are overhauled in accordance with adapting for the new hardware. The GBA has a smaller screen and no backlight, so the graphics were altered to accommodate the display. This is also another take on the soundtrack, a reminder that there is a sound restoration ROM hack for this version if you prefer the sound of the Super Famicom versions. Our next version is Final Fantasy V for mobile phones, obviously, and Steam. This version is based on the GBA version, script and content included. Being a more modern phone game though, we do have autosaves, achievements, and cloud saves. Keep in mind, however, that this version was delisted from storefronts on both mobile and Steam. There's no controller support native to the mobile version, so the UI has been heavily reworked with touch controls in mind. The PC version does move auto battle and escape back to buttons at least, since of course the Steam version does have controller support and allows for remapping buttons. Other UI changes include the resistance stat being on display now, and all spells and items now have descriptions. Additionally, there's 8-way movement, and like we mentioned, there is an auto battle toggle. This version of Final Fantasy V has the most gameplay changes out of all of them, so let's start the long list of changes with the job changes. Berserkers used to suffer an ATB penalty at the start of fights, as per their Berserk. Not only do they not suffer this penalty anymore, but they act independently of the party and target enemies on their own, and this usually means that they'll target the front row. Blue Mage's Vampire spell is fixed now, and it also doesn't work on enemies afflicted with heavy. Monk's kick attack before would not deal full damage from the back row, but now it does. However, the Kaiser Knuckles notably don't boost its damage anymore. Ninjas have the advantage of equipping two weapons. The Dancing Dagger has a chance of attacking twice if you get the Sword Dance ability. In this version of the game, the Sword Dance ability enables a ninja to attack twice with both equipped weapons instead of just the Dancing Dagger. Thief can now sprint in the overworld map, but only in the overworld map. At least it works for vehicles too though. Beastmaster's Calm ability has been fixed, and additionally, some release effects no longer work on targets afflicted with heavy. Bard's songs that raise stats or levels used to have a hard cap of 99, but this cap has been raised to 255. The Ranger has a Bee Swarm attack, and now this Bee Swarm attack can cause poison. Geomancer's Gaia ability has a random effect depending on the terrain and the caster's level. However, level does not matter anymore, so you can potentially get much stronger effects right from the moment you unlock Geomancer. Chemist Power Drink was fixed and now properly grants an attack bonus. Also, the mix effects Death Potion, Dark Psy, and Succubus Kiss used to be unblockable, but now they are now blockable. Also, the mix effect Goliath Tonic grants a party member double HP, but now it can be used on enemies too, which can make them easier to catch. Samurai's Minuchi ability now inflicts paralysis like it's supposed to. Time Mage's Mute spell now mutes everybody in battle like it's supposed to as well. Dragoons used to require 50 APP to unlock Jump for their other jobs, but now it's unlocked at 10. 
Now that we've discussed job changes, let's look at equipment changes. The Defender Sword no longer casts Protect, status effects inflicted by Mix can't be removed by re-equipping weapons anymore, you can also now change equipment on party members inflicted with Zombie, you can't reset the Mirage Vest Blink effect by swapping equipment anymore, and when cast through the Magic Lamp, the Katobalpaw Summon now targets all enemies. Twin Lances now enable attack abilities to damage twice, including abilities like Mug or Jump. You can also stack the Twin Lance's double attack with the Dancing Dagger to do several hits at once. Unfortunately, the Twin Lance used to be able to bypass the Chicken Knife's Flea Chance, but it doesn't bypass it anymore. The Lilith Rod casts Flirt when you attack, though now it can occasionally cast Osmos. Lastly, effects from weapons can still be inflicted even if the attack misses. Berserk and Confuse no longer reset ATB, and the heavy status reduces how long status effects on bosses last. As you can surmise by now, the heavy status has been buffed to make the game more challenging. Prior to this version, everybody's ATB meter fills at the same speed, so the agility stat and status effects would affect where the bar started to fill from. In this version, everyone's ATB meter fills at different speeds depending on their agility stat and statuses. Also, characters can now skip turns between those with full ATB. Additionally, the battle speed option used to only affect enemies, but now it affects everybody in battle. Cast times are also now shown on the ATB bar as well. Quick saving cannot be used to manipulate and counter seeding, but you can still use quick saving to reset step counters. Meanwhile, manipulating encounters simply through menuing was also fixed. Quick is a time magic spell that enables the target to attack multiple times in one turn, leaving everybody else in battle to basically be frozen in place. One exploit beforehand was casting Sap, and then using Quick to stall and let Sap kill the enemy. However, now Sap will wear off if you try to do this. Quick also used to be able to bypass counters, but it can no longer do so. And splitting magic among multiple targets does not have nearly as severe of a damage penalty anymore. Meanwhile, a few enemies enemies and several bosses were tweaked for various reasons. Some examples include Lamia enemies now target anyone with Entice instead of just men, Metamorphs will always be in the back row, and Pantera enemies utilize the image ability like they're supposed to. While the Arco Ivis boss drops chemist drinks for every form defeated, Necrophobe's Hurricane will target the entire party now, and Tyrannosaur counters every magic command with Poison Breath now. Additionally, Liquid Flame starts in the back row, Self Destruct cannot automatically end X-Death anymore, X-Death and Dragon Paws regen work properly now, and Omniscient is harder to deal with when you don't have any dedicated casters now. This version also buffs a known trick with Karnak Shop. You can buy items for cheap and then sell them later to turn a profit. Beforehand though you can only buy one of an item, but now you can buy as many of that item as you can afford. This version as you probably noticed features a vast visual overhaul. Altered sprites, changed backgrounds in battles, new town backgrounds, new dungeon backgrounds, new overworld backgrounds, new dialogue mono portraits, new visual effects for spells, and even redone sprite animations. This version however adopts a mobile game aesthetic that deviates from its source material and as such is a conflicting element to many people. Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster uniquely builds so much off of the mobile port we just discussed that it'd be easier to tell you what's different from the mobile version rather than restate half of the video by telling you what's different from the Super Famicom version. That being said though, the GBA version's bonus dungeon and jobs are not here, but the majority of gameplay tweaks we have seen have carried over, the GBA version's translation is used with some tweaking, and the intro from the Super Famicom and PS1 version was recreated here. Moreover, we've got the the expected bestiary, artwork gallery, and music player. The usual features of the Pixel Remasters are found here. There's quick saving, auto saving, a way movement, and detailed maps with item tracking. Just like the other times I've shown the Pixel Remasters, nothing has changed in terms of the font or potential frame rate issues. Equipment and spell stats were pulled from the GBA version and balanced accordingly with other gameplay changes. So now let's discuss those gameplay changes that were made from the mobile port to the Pixel Remaster. 
Keep in mind I tested these things personally, so there's potentially other changes I didn't test or account for, but this is what I've been able to perceive and I'm confident that anything that's potentially missing might not be too noteworthy. Berserker's attacks go back to being random in who they select, so that you're usually not targeting the front row anymore. Thief's dash behaves like it did in the PlayStation version. You'd sprint in towns and dungeons again, and the dash stacks with the default sprinting. Geomancer's Gaia ability operates as it originally did. Your level is a factor in determining which attacks can be possibly randomly selected. Also, not only do the Twin Lance Weapon and Sword Dance ability work how they did in the mobile version, but they now change targets if they've already killed the initial target. Weapon effects can't proc when you miss, and the Defender Sword once again can be used to cast Protect. The Katobal Paw Summon also now only targets one enemy again. Miscellaneous changes include moments where you have to simply wait were reduced, the effect of the wait stat on agility was doubled, starting ATB is random though it does still increase at different speeds, sap is slower, and bows and whips now deal double damage to flying enemies. Additionally, you can only buy one of an item in Karnak again. One anomaly that has remained in every version up until the Pixel Remaster was that a full party of Berserkers was immune to the Chicken Knife's random force fleeing, but this has now been fixed. And the last note on gameplay is regarding the patches the Pixel Remaster has already received. Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster has had two patches. These patches address new bugs and oversights that have since been fixed and don't really need to be discussed. Moreover, the last patch notes do say that they are and done patching, but I'm confident as of right now at least that any further changes they make won't make any info in this video outdated. If I'm wrong about that, check the comments and see if there's a pinned comment or an addendum comment. There was one noteworthy change I should mention though as of the release of this video at the end of 2021, and that is that the Golem Summon now provides protection from status conditions on top of their usual protection from physical damage. So let's discuss visuals then. Enemy sprites come from the Super Famicom version version, and battle backgrounds are from the GBA version. Otherwise, the font, party sprites, spell effects, and environment details are pretty new, including NPC sprites for important characters. It's also notable that Final Fantasy V's Pixel Remaster's characters remain just as animated as the original two. While this Pixel Remaster probably stands out the most visually from the prior Pixel Remasters, they are homogenizing the look of the games in the same way that the titles were homogenized on GBA to all appear like the Super Nintendo titles. Moving on to the soundtrack then, this is the first orchestral rescoring of the soundtrack used in any version of Final Fantasy V, and it has been overseen by Uematsu. So for the most part, things are straightforward this time around. The Super Famicom version offers the original experience, and due to the PlayStation version's issues and possibly off-putting translation, you may want to opt for a fan translation of the Super Famicom version to ensure a smoother gameplay experience. Meanwhile, the GBA version offers more content, better localization, and fixes many bugs and oversights. It's not without a few flaws though, of course. Then the mobile port brings a lot of gameplay tweaks and a controversial look too. Lastly, the Pixel Remaster loses that bonus content, but does fix more legacy bugs and oversights than any other version. Its visuals are also less controversial, so if you're looking for the most polished gameplay, you've got the Pixel Remaster. And that's that for this video, thanks again to the Final Fantasy Wiki, speedrunning, and data mining communities. The insight shared in these videos would not be possible at all without their efforts and documentation over the years. A big thank you to Reddit user Agridine who documented many changes found in a mobile version, and everyone that helped fill his post with info. I will be back to cover Final Fantasy VI when it releases in February, but in the meantime I will be experimenting with some smaller and shorter filler projects that I think people that have been watching these videos are going to enjoy, and they will be faster for me to produce in the meantime. But I am also going to get myself a little bit of a break because I did go between these five games pretty consecutively. So like many YouTubers, I will be using the beginning of the new year to take some time to myself. That being said then, until next time, thank you for watching.